or um, AECC English A. Uh, before starting, uh, I would just like to tell you that don't worry about uh, the WhatsApp group. Uh, once everything will be sorted out regarding, you know, uh, the A, B and C classes, we will have a WhatsApp group. Don't worry about that. And if there's any uh, issues regarding the material, you can go to the as well website and download it from there. Download the syllabus as well as the material that is provided to you on the as well site. Also, um, once everyone is clear, I think in a, in a week, everything will be clear regarding uh, the uh, the classes that you are all in. Uh, like many of you have pointed out in the last class that if you uh, look at the receipt, the fee receipt um, that you have, um, your A, B and C, English A, B and C is mentioned over there. So um, have a look at that and attend your classes accordingly. All right. And uh, in a week's time when everyone is comfortable with um, the classes, once they know which classes they have to attend, uh, we can have uh, a WhatsApp group. We can form a WhatsApp group. All right. So the SOL material about um, for this particular paper, AECC, is there on SOL website. And uh, if there are any questions or issues, of course, we can discuss it in class. We can also uh, look it over in the group also. Right. And um, in the last few classes, I will definitely share uh, more materials if you uh, if you think that you still have not understood the concept right uh, and we can also uh, discuss the um, question paper okay and i will definitely share the material with you don't worry about that um i'm sorry i'm not on telegram so yeah so um, like I've said in the earlier class, uh, in the previous class too, that um, this, uh, what was I saying? I'm sorry, I forgot. What was the question? Ha, huh. uh, please recommend a book. Um, so there are many different books. There are many different textbooks that are available in the market for AECC. What you need to see is that, uh, that it is specifically for Delhi University AECC. All right. As long as it is a Delhi University prescribed syllabus, um, the, the, the book is following the syllabus of uh, Delhi University. Uh, you can, uh, you know, buy the book or you can have a look at it. And if you think it's um, valuable material for you, it's a supplementary material of what, what has been taught to you in class, then of course you can buy the book. All right. So um, that's uh the um the introduction all right so let's get on with the um class in the last class let's have a look at what we did in the last class in the last class we looked at uh, the very basics of uh, communication i'm sorry yeah the concept of communication was discussed right and uh, we looked at where does the word communication come uh, comes from it comes from the latin word communicare which means to share and it also comes from the latin word communis which means commonness and is another word for communication and uh, we as human beings have been doing communications on various levels uh, to uh, to uh, we as human beings have been doing communications on various levels uh, to uh, discuss or to uh, you know talk about or fulfill our needs whether it is social educational psychological education uh, financial professional or cultural in its nature then we looked at a few definitions of communication uh, where the keywords were transmission transfer of information uh, meaningful information that is to be shared exchange of behavior a message that is uh, sent by the sender and received by the receiver all right and it is a social system that uh, that we follow right while we are communicating then we looked at why do we need to communicate we need to communicate on an individual in an individual context a social context and a 
professional or an organizational context. In an individual context, we try to uh, communicate or use communication to gain more information about ourselves, about the people around us, to uh, be more successful, to realize our aspirations, to enforce the behavioral patterns, whether we are happy, whether we deserve respect, whether we are sad, right? And of course, it helps in forming relationships, human relationships, right? And uh, in the social context, it helps in educating people, it helps in persuading people, it helps in generating enthusiasm amongst people, it helps dissuading people from doing something wrong, it helps in changing the society, it helps in creating a sense of revolution within it as a, a call for transformation rather. It helps in performing forming many functions and it also helps in building an image of individuals um, in a social context. Then in the organizational context, we looked at how communication is very important for a professional working in an organization. It helps to, um, it serves as an essential tool because it helps in connecting to his or her peers, to the managers. It helps in keeping the employees or the professionals informed about the tasks of the organization. It helps in facilitating the basic management processes. It helps in coordinating the organization and um, the organization within the organization and kind of coordination that's happening among the employees and it helps in promoting active leadership it also helps in evaluating uh, the employee or the professional and of course the main main issue uh, idea of feedback that uh, you can always receive and give feedback in an organization through the uh, tool of communication <clears throat> And lastly, we looked at the effective methods, the aims and methods, right? When we are communicating, what are the effective methods or what are the effective aims and methods to communicate? Um, to uh, right to communicate sorry um first is to identify the object why do we need to communicate why do we require any form of communication right first if they once the um objective is settled or the objective is identified then we move on to the next step that is how are we going to present our thoughts our feelings our ideas our emotions right and then we are going to select the medium for communication what is the perfect medium to communicate are we going to do it verbally are we going to do it over a phone are we going to do it through a snap to a bunch of snaps and snapchat are we going to do it on whatsapp or are we going to do it on email all right and once the medium has been established we choose an appropriate environment for the delivery right right now we are doing it virtually because there's a pandemic going outside so this is the environment that is to be created right if you want to break some kind of bad news you would not go to a social club to talk to your friend about it right the environment is very very necessary like for example we cannot have a class uh, in a mall Right. So an appropriate environment is to be created to deliver the right message in the right setting. Then paralinguistic features. Don't worry if you do not understand what I mean by paralinguistic features. Paralinguistic uh, features will be discussed in the forthcoming classes. But right now for you, uh, for you to understand what paralinguistic features means is the idea of how we are using our tone, our pitch, our gestures, our facial expressions to communicate. Right. Once so sometimes it happens that your friend is sitting far away from you in the class and you just need to have a look at him to understand whether he's enjoying or whether he's suffering, whether it's sad or angry. Right. And lastly, no communication is complete without feedback. Right. Once the sender sends his message, right, and the receiver receives his messages, the communication process is only considered complete when there is a feedback right for example if i ask you a question until and unless you answer me i would not know that you have understood what i was going to say what i was asking you sorry all right so feedback so this was uh, the last class a summary of the last class and um, let's have a look at what we are going to do today So I have uh, discussed what we did in the last class.
All right. So today we are going to do Hockett's features, human communication versus animal uh, communication. Let me reiterate again that do not worry about the WhatsApp group. Please focus on the lectures right now. Worry about the WhatsApp group later. I do not understand the urgency to create a WhatsApp group right now when you clearly won't understand what is being delivered to you in the lectures. If you just for once forget that we will create a WhatsApp group and focus on the lectures that is going to help you then that WhatsApp group. I told you again and again that don't worry, it will be formed later. Just focus on what is being taught to you. I do not understand this. If there is any issue with my voice or the video, please leave the uh, class and rejoin. Rejoin. Okay. All right. If there's any issue technically, don't worry. There won't be an issue over here because there's a technical team member of the technical team always present during class. So if there is, is any issue regarding my video or any thing that uh, you may not understand, then he would point it out. But if it is happening on your end, then please leave the class and then rejoin. OK, that is the best way. Don't miss out thinking that you know your you have technical errors or something. Just uh, quickly rejoin the class. All right. Now let's get on with the um, human communication versus animal communication. All right. Part two of unit one. So here are the Hockett's design features that we will be discussing today. Communication mode, rapid fading, interchangeability, feedback, specialization, semanticity, arbitrariness, discreteness, displacement, productivity, cultural transmission, duality, prevarication, reflexiveness and learnability. So here is a diagram. Um, let me just zoom this for you a little Wait. So don't worry if you cannot see this diagram. Uh, it's easily available on Google. If you just type Hockett's design features, uh, a lot of diagrams uh, will appear. All right. And um, let me just share it with you. Just a second. Wait a second. To clear any confusion, wait. Okay, so I have I've shared the um, link for the image. If you cannot see it on PowerPoint, if it's not clear, I hope you can see that I've published it. All right, so let's start. All right. So what is human communication versus animal communication? Hawkins design features are a set of features that characterize human language and set it apart from animal communication. All right. And these were the um, the different features that the linguistic anthropologist Charles F. Hockett came up with in the 1960s. The first is the vocal and auditory. 
what is what does vocal and auditory infer this design feature is fairly straightforward hockett believed an important feature of human languages was the use of the vocal and auditory channels the way we use this larynx right we use our sound box uh, right the way we are using our vocal and auditory channels to produce sound to produce a kind of vibrations that uh, you know give birth to these words that we are forming all right that is distinguishable that's the first feature okay and you can uh, easily relate to this uh, uh, the image where the man is producing a set of vibrations and auditory which means that you are listening uh, and it registers in the ears of the human beings which they can pick up and understand what is being spoken to them right for example if i speak in punjabi the vibrations that will be produced the sound that will be coming out it can be understood by people around me that perhaps she is not speaking the language that i speak or she is speaking in punjabi or she has a few words in hindi too which we can perhaps understand all right so vocal and auditory channel is very specific to human beings <clears throat> then broadcast transmission and directional reception the directionality hocket is referring to in regards to this parameter is the way that human language is produced with aim and this aim is perceivable to the receiver right for example if you are sitting in a class if you are sitting in a physical class and the person right at the back calls out ma'am i have a question so i would be looking towards him i would know where the noise with the sound came from right i would not be looking elsewhere i would not be looking outside of the window to see ye awaaz kahan se aayi right i would be looking at the person or the student or the learner that has asked me the question right when we are talking to a friend we are looking towards him and we are speaking to him we are not talking to the walls we are speaking to the person in front of us right right now i am speaking to the laptop to my screen because i know that it is being recorded and you are sitting behind and you are all using your laptops your mobile phones to connect to me right so for example when we speak we speak with a specific audience in mind and we usually direct our speech at this person by orienting our mouth towards them similarly when we hear spoken language we are usually able to perceive from which direction it came in so let's have a look at this uh, diagram once again so sorry broadcast transmission and directional reception right so our ears are trained to understand where the voice is coming from or where the sound is coming from or where we supposed to turn to to hear uh, what is being told to us or what is been uh, you know said to us right so um, also the way we speak our mouth is also trained to speak to the person who is going to be in front of us right then then rapidly fading hmm rapidly fading the sound waves that transmit spoken language rapidly fade once they are transmitted if they are not perceived the message is lost unlike written language which is clear Uh, which it is clear how it excludes from human language speech cannot be perceived <coughs> after its sound waves are gone right so of course the way that uh, the the words that i'm using right now after some, uh, after the fact that they have been right outside of my mouth they will disappear right it's not like you're hearing me uh, echoes of my voice the whenever i'm speaking right as soon as the word escapes as soon as the sound escapes my mouth it disappears yeah. right it is not going to stay in the air right it is not going to be hanging in the air and after like one hour you'll be like oh ma'am is still speaking when ma'am is in there right no that how it happened as soon as the words leave our mouths 
right if the words or the vibrations start fading right except for the written word hocket has pointed out human communication quickly fades only written communication is this form of communication that actually stays but oral communication of any kind is once it is out of your mouth it disappears it slowly slowly goes away all right so here you can see in the uh, in the uh, diagram they have shown rapid fainting that once the word is out once the word has escaped the mouth the noise or the sound the vibrations have escaped the mouth it soon disappears in the air right then we have interchangeability interchangeability in the absence of impairment all adult speakers of a language have equal ability to transmit and receive any message linguistic signals humans are not limited in the types of messages they can say or hear one can say i am a boy even if one is a girl this is not to be confused with lying or prevarication the importance is that a speaker can physically create any and all messages regardless of their truth or relation to the speaker in other words anything that one can say uh, anything sorry one can hear one can also say there are no messages that are exclusive to only some members as an ant colonies for example in which a queen may be able to transmit chemical messages that others biologically cannot produce right so another very important feature of human communication which differs from animal communication is the idea of interchangeability where for example i can say and you can say anything that you want if i am a teacher right now i can simply say that i am a student right and you if you are a student you can say i am a teacher so we can interchange uh, our sentences n number of times we can produce sentences to the power of infinity right as long as we know the words we can create n number of sentences it does not mean that we are only going to create a limited number of sentences right just the way animal colonies function for example in ant colonies only the queen ant has been allowed to give out a kind of a chemical message to all the other ants that yes the work has been done but the worker ants cannot do so similarly this happens in the bee hive too that the queen bee is responsible and can transmit her messages the worker bee cannot do so right but for us if we can hear we can speak if we do not even understand and we can hear we speak right for example if we do not understand uh, bangla we do not understand punjabi uh, and we hear to their songs we start uh, they start singing them do we not right so if you're hearing those words clearly and we may not understand what they are about but we can speak them okay we can interchange the uh, you know words that we are speaking with the words that we are hearing animals cannot do that right uh, for example a bear cannot make the sound of a dolphin a dolphin cannot make the sound of something else right of an elephant perhaps but we can use uh, but we can speak in different languages with that we may or may not even understand right then total feedback as if a diagram i will look at the diagram interchangeability as long as we can hear you can see the vibrations that he is hearing as long as he can hear he can speak in anything all right then total feedback total feedback speakers of a language can hear their own speech and can control and modify what they are saying as they say it similarly signers see feel and control their signing what does this mean total feedback for example if i am giving you a lecture 
right physically and i see that most of you are quite bored or sleepy i will change the way i speak i can change my tone i can bring in new examples that you connect with right for example if we are going to a friend and we tell him about some news and suddenly he seems agitated or irritated we'll suddenly change um our idea of speaking will will shift the, um him away from that particular topic to another topic right um we will give him some kind of a different a topic to discuss right so we know what is happening in front of us so the way the, the as soon as the words escape from our mouth we have as humans the innate ability to understand what the other person is also thinking right through his emotions through his gestures through his feelings to his eyes we can understand if he or if he or she understands us or if he or she is angry with us happy with us confused puzzled or anything right so there is always this ability of giving total feedback you can see over here in the image that once it is going out of your mouth you can train yourself you are um rather you have the ability to know how the message that you are giving out is being received by the person in front of you all right just give me 2 minutes to rest my voice all right then we'll be looking at specialization specialization the function of the action must be communicative and not a biological function in other words the purpose of speech is to communicate and does not serve any biological need or a function for example a non in um, as form of non specialist communities you can see if the dog is hungry he will take out his uh, tongue and uh, show that he's panting right he when the dog pants you know that he is hungry he's feeling uh, hot or he is you know thirsty 
right so uh, a dog panting or a dog's tail wagging from here and there and there's a lot of these uh, you know posts if you just google you will know that they'll tell you if the dog's tail is erect it means something if it's down it's scared if it's wagging it's happy right so it serves a biological need it serves a kind of a need okay so however the dog pants in order to cool itself and this is a biological function and communication is secondary but we do not do that as human beings our our specialization our communication is solely for the purpose of communicating um the, as the words escape our mouth they do not serve any kind of biological function they are only um used to communicate all right to express to express our thoughts our feelings our ideas and share information all right and here let's have a look at the diagram for a uh, specialization here he is only using the words to communicate whereas for example you have dogs that are wagging their tail to suggest that they are hungry all right then the idea of semanticity the symbols within a language must have symbolic meaning words within human language are symbols for things or ideas right for example when we are studying a b c d e we know how a is being written how b is written how c is written right and that is how we grow up to learn the language that is how we grow up to form words and use it as form of communication it's not like if it is an a we will say that mm -hmm, it's a d it's an e no as long as it is written like this it is an a right if this is b it is a b it cannot be a c it cannot be a d right so whatever symbols are for for uh, form a language those are followed right so far we have been unable to understand what kind of languages have been produced or what do uh, if there is a language that is being produced by animals do they follow a particular pattern or not of course studies are being undergoing uh, to study a sense of patterns especially for example if you look at dolphins um if you look at um orcas if you look at orcas and uh, uh, orcas or killer whales they also have a kind of a language that they speak right they have these vibrations that they give out under water right and studies are still going undergo uh, are being uh, you know they're being researched on to understand that do they really follow a pattern and if they're following a pattern it will be repeated the way we are using words you will always find these words being repeated in different contexts and meanings that's why you understand the meaning of a particular word right so similarly um, a lot of studies have been happening to study all of these animal studies um mm -hmm. animals on ground and above ground too what are they speaking and do they follow a pattern or not but for human language for human communication the main point for you to understand right now is that we follow a set we follow a pattern right we follow a set of social symbols of language symbols that we follow that contains or uh, makes a language system okay then um semanticity right here here is the diagram and you can see pass the salt he's been asked he's been asked to pass the salt and we know what pass the salt means right we are not going to pass him pepper we are not going to pass him red chili powder we are not going to pass him chili flakes we are going to uh, pass the salt right and if i say please attend the class right please attend the class for aecc you won't be attending your commerce class saying that no that is aecc and this is commerce no right so you know what is being told to you and what it means all right then we'll go on to arbitrariness sorry just a second Hmm. arbitrariness the symbols are arbitrary in form the relationship between the four words themselves and the things to which they refer is random 
There is nothing about the word dog which connects it to the concept of a dog, except that we have agreed that this is the meaning of it in English. Almost all names a human language attributes an object is thus arbitrary. The word car is nothing like an actual car. Spoken words are really nothing like the objects they represent. This is further demonstrated by the fact that different languages attribute very different names to the same subject or object. Sorry. Right. Uh, just the way we were looking at before that the idea that we have the ability to say that I am an astronaut, even if I'm not an astronaut, um, I am a chef, even I if I may not be a chef. So similarly, for example, if I say that this is not a mobile phone, this is a car, right? So I can say anything, right? But what arbitrariness suggests Right, what arbitrariness suggests, this particular feature suggests that if you're calling, we can call an iPhone a mobile, we can call a 3310 mobile, we can call anything a mobile, right? The word mobile doesn't have a particular definition or doesn't have a particular image that comes to our mind, right? We we give words to different things around us, right? Bec that doesn't mean they, they look like it. Right, a car may not look, the word car may not look like a word car. The tree, the word tree may not look like a tree, right? But we say it, we call it that. The word lamp may, uh, the, won't look like the word lamp, right? The tube light, uh, the pencil box, it does not mean they look like the words that they refer to. Okay, so this is arbitrariness. An apple does not look like an apple, the word apple. Right, but we call a red kind of a fruit an apple. Okay, so this is arbitrariness. Animals do not do that. Animals do not create voices and say that, you know, this is this or this is that, right? Then discreteness. Discreteness, human language is, com oh, sorry, let's have a look at the diagram first for arbitrariness. In arbitrariness, you have been given two examples of a whale and a microorganism. Now, a whale is a whale that does not mean W H A L E can mean um, any kind of a fish or a dolphin, right? Because they already have words to them, right? There's already um, a dolphin means something that has like a bottleneck, uh, right? For a mouth. And if he is calling a fish, a small fish, we know how small fish looks like. If we say it's a whale, that very word W H A N E means a rather big fish, right? A shark, we always imagine it with that thing, right? Like a fish, uh, sorry, a fin that's protruding out of its head, right? So uh, the words mean something, right? But they also do not mean anything. That's the, the idea behind arbitrariness. Then discreteness. Human language is comprised of discrete units. Words in languages are made up of discrete number of sounds. They are perceived categorically, not continuously. For example, English marks numbers with the plural morpheme. Smallest sound is morpheme. Okay, the s that we used at the end, for example, relationships. So, all right, it means that one is a relationship singular and relationships form uh, a plural boy and boys, right? So when we add that morphine, we can change it, we can change the meaning, right? So the plural morpheme is perceived categorically, not continuously. We cannot express a smaller or larger quantities by varying how loudly we pronounce the words. So this is what discreteness means. For example, if I say a boy and we say boys and then I say boys. Now that doesn't mean if I'm adding that zzz extra, the boys will increase in number. All right. Boys, B-O-Y-S and B-O-Y-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S -S 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 doesn't mean that um, 
they both differ they both the same thing it doesn't mean that if i'm adding an emphasis to it it suddenly means something different like for example when we say in uh, when we are chatting with our friends on whatsapp we say we are okay and with a why 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 it doesn't mean that we are okay on a whole different level we just okay but we just uh, you know adding it uh, like for fun with our friends right i'm sad right if you write sad with an extra three uh, alphabet uh, the d's at the end of the word sad it does not mean you're extra sad right you're just sad right so we have these words that we can add at the end right these morphemes that are to be added at the end of the words does not change the meaning does not change the meaning if you emphasize it of you or you underemphasize it right it just means the same thing all right then displacement let's have a look at the the image first yeah discreteness so it's a pin and it's a bin if it does it doesn't mean if it's a pin so if it's a small pin i'll speak it slowly it's a pin no it's a pin okay yeah displacement language can refer to things that are not present this feature allows them to refer to abstract concepts as well as items that are simply out of view of members of a conversation speakers can talk about the past and the future and can express hopes and dreams a human speech is not limited to here and now displacement is one of the features that separates human beings from other primate conversation a very important feature for of human communication is that we have the ability to talk about our past or the future right we can talk about things that has not happened and things that have happened in the past and that are no way related to the present so we can use our language to discuss things of the past of the things that have happened and of the things that may happen right the way we are studying history we we were in present during that time but we can certainly talk about it and that is displacement animals on the other hand cannot talk about cannot talk about or communicate right they may be present for example a turtle and a tortoise can be present for hundreds of years right they, they can age i think you know their age is uh, sorry they can live up to um, 200 300 years and it does not mean they can talk about it or communicate that this is what they have lived uh, this is the time you know around a few years back i was doing this no the animal cannot do that human beings can do that human beings can talk about their pasts and their futures animals can live as long as uh, you know 200 to 300 years many whales can live around to 200 300 years but can they communicate what they have been feeling or what they saw in the previous uh, years no they cannot do that all right so that's displacement then we have productivity what is productivity the discrete units of a language may be used to create an infinite possible number of messages the finite number of sounds that can be produced by the human vocal tract and smaller sets of these which a particular human language may be comprised of can be combined in an infinite number of ways to create new words which themselves can be combined into an infinite number of combinations to create an infinite number of meanings language is not stagnant but it's certainly changing right it's constantly changing so what is productivity like i've said as human beings we have the ability to provide n number of words and language as a system is constantly changing um earlier we did not use the words like let right we did not use the words it's a vibe we did not use that but now we are using that and now the meanings of these words have been changed earlier lit ka matlab lit hi hota tha like the light has been lit up the lamps have been lit up and it's a vibe we meant it means energy but now we use it in a different way that it's a vibe right so productivity we can create infinite numbers of words we can in create infinite number of messages so the power of communication and then traditional transmission 
Languages acquired through some combination of biology and environment. We acquire the ability to have and use language biologically, while we require modeling, teaching, and other environmental inputs in order to acquire it. However, we are not born with any kind of complete use of human language. What does traditional transmission mean is that when a baby is born, he or she does not possess the ability to communicate in a language, right? He learns it. He traditionally learns it. He learns it by speaking to his parents, the parents speaking to him. He learns to write. He learns to how to hold a pen. He learns how to use his mouth to utter words, right? So it is a traditionally transmitted system of language, right? You animals are not trained. You do not see an animal writing down words or uh, give, been given a dictation by his parent animal or not, right? They just learn to, you know, create words. A bird does chi 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 chi, right? It is not writing. It is not uh, so hearing the bird is not going to repeat, say chi, say chi. No, it does not do that. Right? Animals, uh, sorry, human beings are being trained are always being trained to speak or uh, write. All right, so traditional transmission of language. And lastly, duality. Patterning, a duality of patterning language is composed of a system of phonology mapped onto a system of grammar. Meaningful messages are made up of distinct smaller units, words and morphemes, which themselves are made up of distinct smaller meaningless units. For example, don't get confused by this again. Um, so if there is a word, we can break it down into smaller words like uneducated, right? In uneducated, we have un, that is a prefix. We have ed, that is a suffix. And we have educated, uh, educate, right, in the middle. So uneducated, and that is a word. And we can break this word into, you know, these three little, little forms. We can remove the ed, we can remove un, we can bring only educate, right? So this is the way human language works. We can create it using different morphemes. We can add to the words that are there in front of us. All right, so this was duality. All right, so this was today's lecture. And what did we discuss? We looked at Hawkins design features, where we looked at communication mode, rapid fading. We looked at communication mode, which is the vocal and the auditory channel that if I can speak, you can hear. Right. And then the idea of broadcast transmission that once the language escapes, once the word escapes, sorry, once the words escape from our mouth, they are not going to stay in the air for a very long time. But in underwater, you can see that, you know, with dolphins and with um, many other fishes, large fishes, whales, um, there is a kind of a vibration that they can hear at a distance and it can stay. Right. Then the idea of a rapid fading, sorry, broadcast transmission. Uh, I got confused. <laughs> so this was rapid fading. Broadcast transmission is when a voice is being called out. Right. Uh, and somebody asks you something. You suddenly turn towards that person to hear what this person is saying. Right. So naturally, we, we will know where we are supposed to turn. And that's broadcast fading. Rapid fading is that once the words escape our mouth, they're not going to stay. Then interchangeability, whatever that we can hear, if we understand it or not, we can speak it out, right? Total feedback, we can change the way we speak when we have a look at what is happening in front of us. If our person is angry, irritated, we can change what we are going to say, right? Special, uh, specialization, we do our communication does not serve any kind of a biological need. We only speak to communicate our feelings, thoughts and expressions. Semanticity, the words mean something. If you say pass the salt, you will pass the salt and you will not pass the pepper, right? Arbitrariness, the words that we give, that the, the words that we assign to different things may not mean or may not look like those things that the words have been assigned to. All right, then discreteness, that if we emphasize or underemphasize any particular word, the word meaning the meaning of the word won't change. If it's a boys, if you say boys, the quantity of the boys won't change. It will remain the same. Then displacement. We can use a language to talk the past. We talk about uh, and the future, right? And productivity. We can talk about um, 
how we can create meanings from words in n number of ways. Infinite possibilities are possible in the language that we use. And then traditional transmission. When we grow up, when we grow up, we as a baby, we learn language. Language is not a natural ability. The way we use our hands, the way we see. No, language is something that we learn. And duality of patterning is duality of patterning means that a word can be broken down and divided into smaller morphemes. All right. So this is what we uh, studied in today's lecture. Um, I uh, and for students who did not, sorry, who were not present in the last lecture, I gave you a brief summary at the beginning of this particular lecture too. So I hope you were present for that. And also all of these lectures are in a passport. I discussed the last lecture. Any other questions? We have five units in ECC. Yes, Manoj Kumar Garg English communication book is sufficient. Any other questions? Broadcast transmission is um, what who asked me Bhavna Bhavna, for example, if you're sitting in front of me, if you're sitting like we're having a physical class Bhavna and you're, you're sitting at the end and you raise your hand and you say that ma'am, I have a question. So immediately I would know that, you know, Bhavna called me out. Right, Bhavna is sitting at the back and I need to respond to her. Right, and sometimes um, we know where the voice is coming from. Right, when we are walking and one of our friends call us, Hello, Bhavna, where are you? So we will immediately turn to where the voice is coming from. Right, where that sound is coming from. That's brought us transmission. If, if our friend is sitting in front of us, we will be talking to him. We'll be talking to him. Right, we are not going to. Uh, like for example in a class i'm not going to sit over here like i'm not going to move my face over there and speak no i'll speak in the camera towards you okay i'll be speaking towards you the the voice or the sound that we produce should be directed towards the receiver okay i hope this is clear for you bhavna SOL book is there on the SOL website. There is this book, like one of you has pointed out, Manoj Kumar Garg by Manoj Kumar Garg. And I have, I've told you this like already, I don't know how many times that I'm repeating this again. Just focus on the lectures. Focus on the lectures. Everything will be provided to you. If you just focus on what is being taught to you in the lectures right now, you wouldn't have to worry about the other things. But clearly you are trying to think about the things that really do not matter right now. So that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Uh, the 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 lecture has been recorded and soon it will be uploaded on your uh, dashboards. So don't worry about that. Dual patterning Ria means is that, for example, um, you know, when we're using words, when you're using words in English, for example, they can be broken down into smaller units. Like I use the ex uh, you know, example of uh, knowledgeable, for example, uh, knowledgeable. So there is a word knowledge in it and there's a word able in it. So it means something uneducated, remove the un, remove the educate and remove the E. So our language can be broken down into smaller patterns. That is what we mean. This is not literature, by the way. Someone, Khushi Sharma, 
This is AECC, not literature. This is Ability Enhancement Compulsory Course English. We are not taking a literature class. Literature is entirely different. All right. So I'll take one last question. Traditional transmission by Charlie, I've just explained that traditional transmission means that you will know where the sound is coming from. You will know uh, where to turn to if someone calls out your name. You will always turn towards the person you need to speak to. All right. So we would know that. Oh, sorry, just a second. Yeah. Uh, oh, nothing, nothing. It's just my uh, screen. All right. And one last question by Mohammed Danish. Uh, Danish semanticity means that the ideas, the, the words that we are using, they mean something. Right. They follow a set pattern, a set pattern. A language is a system, right? Right at the beginning when we we're looking at communication, we looked at that it is a system of words. So if you're seeing pepper, we know that if someone asks for pepper, we will give him pepper. We will not give him salt. We will not give him chili flakes, right? We will give him pepper. So this is the symbols that we follow. It is A, B, C. Right? We cannot say that A is B and B is C and C is D. No, we follow a set of norms. We follow a set of symbols and that is semanticity. All right. Paralinguistic features. Don't worry, Devyansh. It will be discussed in the following lectures. Paralinguistic features. Right now, what you need to worry about is it's the gestures, the tones, the pitch, right? So when we are talking, we change our tone, we change our pitch, we change our gestures, our facial expressions. That's all paralinguistic features. Akash, I didn't understand what question you have asked. No, there will be no literature, please. Students, this is AECC. -E this is not literature, it's AECC. -E Vocal and auditory channel, Ritika means that vocal and auditory. Vocal, aapki voice kaha saari hai. You are being producing your voice through your vocal channel. And auditory means anything that refers to the ear. Auditory canal, kaha hai ear mein. So whatever that we speak, we hear. Right? So vocal and auditory channel. Devyansh, paralinguistic features. Gestures, facial expressions. Shreya, right now you can, of course, uh, just have a look at the S1 material that is provided to you on the S1 site. All right. So let's meet in the next class. I think the next class is on 13th. If I'm not wrong, we will be completing unit number one. All right. So don't worry. I will be uh, doing a recapitulation of this particular lecture two in the next class, like I did with unit one, part one. All right. So bye-bye, take care.